after such an interesting discussion and uh, taking the words of the, of the minister about uh, collaboration and bidirectionality, uh, the second panel will be about the cyber bridge uh, that is being construct, constructed between the ecosystem of the US and the ecosystem of, of the Basque country in cyber. This bridge was firstly established in the late 90s by Panda Security, one of the companies you will find here today. And following the trail blazed by Panda uh, almost uh, 20 years ago, uh, there are some other companies that are putting a footprint in the US. Today, we will have here Toby from Bayshore Networks, which is an American company uh, targeting Europe as a market and that are planning to establish their subsidiary in the Basque country. They are very, very focused on ICS, cyber for ICS. We will also have uh, Dan. Uh, Dan is a British man, an entrepreneur, who decided to establish his company, his business, in the Basque country. And now, very recently, they have been awarded their first contracts in the US. And third, in this panel, we will have Roberto. Roberto is a Basque entrepreneur, a person who decided to build a business in the place he was born. So finally, the panel will be conducted by Gorka, Gorka Sadowski, who has Basque ancestors. So he knows very well our culture and our society. And additionally, Gorka holds the position in Gartner uh, Research as a senior director analyst in security infrastructure protection for IT leaders. Gorka has been over 20 years working in solving technology and cybersecurity problems for organizations of all sizes, both in the US and in Europe. So Gorka, please, the floor is yours. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I, I have more than Basque ancestors. I'm Basque myself. I was born in Basque country, and I grew up in Basque country, so I, I like to think that, uh, that I'm Basque. Uh, great to see some of, uh, so many of you uh, um, out there. Before we start on this awesome panel, I just want to um, have you guys notice how awesome weather it is outside. If you like that weather, Basque is the same, okay? <laughs> it, it, rains, it rains much more, right? So everything is green, like Chernobyl green. It glows in the dark, but it's, it's, it's a very similar weather. So anyways, we're not here to talk about weather. We're here to welcome our awesome panelists. Uh, Dan, Toby, and Roberto, could you guys please uh, come in here? So before we start, we heard from Javier that you guys have awesome companies doing wonderful things. Well, let's start with you, uh, Toby. You, you know, what, what is so wonderful that you guys are doing? So uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks, nice to see you all. Big Networks provides endpoint protection for industrial assets. Filter the activity such that going forward, uh, it can't change other than from an authorized source with an authorized intention. Uh, and there, there are various different uh, specific products that do this and different use cases within these industrial environments. But ultimately, we position ourselves as a last line of defense to ensure that the plant keeps running the way it did yesterday and the way that its operators wanted to work. So that's what, uh, that's what Bayshore does. Hi everybody, my name is Dan, um, one of the founders of Countercraft, and thanks Gorka. So we use deception techniques to generate threat intelligence. Okay, so that means we deploy fake bits of IT, in some cases fake IoT, and we gather intel from that. Now uniquely, we deploy this stuff not only inside traditional networks and you know, organizational boundaries, but also outside on the internet, okay, to gather um, kind of what kind of attacks are coming into an organization. Um, through the Basque government, we worked with um, the world's biggest steel manufacturer to apply these deception techniques to an IoT and industrial um, setting, and they worked really well. So we were protecting blast furnaces, and we were very proud to do that, okay? 
So that's Countercraft. If you want to know more, well, talk to me later. I'm going to hand you on now to yes, Roberto. Roberto. Hi. Hi, good morning. Uh, we are HD Security. We are a company uh, focused on software security. Probably most of you, uh, you are developing software, you are developing some kind of application. Uh, you know that it's very complicated to create uh, really secure applications, okay? Uh, I, I'm very surprised because many of the companies that we are seeing in the market, they are not actually using some kind of security product that helps them uh, to detect their security bugs during the development, okay? So we, we have one product focused in that area that helps people uh, solving these, those issues during the development, okay? Uh, in addition to that, unfortunately, unfortunately for us, uh, there are other kind of issues that are not possible to detect by tools, right? So in that sense, we uh, protect from those issues in, in production. So actually, we are automating a process that is not uh, automated by the process, okay? That's why one of the first customers uh, was in the, in the US, one uh, huge bank here in, in San Francisco, so basically because we are solving a problem and it's not, it's not solved by, by the state of the art. So, so then f what I understand is that you have solutions that are structural solutions. So for any enterprise that is writing code and is doing a code application, you have solutions that make sure that that code is secure, right? right? And then we have also a deception company that uh, fools attackers into believing that they are attacking something else and the organization can use your tools to uh, generate threat intelligence and understanding and about an attack and, and, and be able to help. And you also seem to have very, very powerful um, ICS and IoT capabilities in your um, uh, in, in, in your solution. So maybe a question back to, um, you know, you, you mentioned that you, you want to go to Basque country, that, that you know, you're interested in Basque country. Obviously you're very successful. Um, you can go anywhere you want. You can decide to go anywhere you want. You, um, I think I read this morning another press release of a great thing you guys have achieved. Oh, oh, you choose. Why did you choose Basque Country? The simple reason is uh, through our engineering director in Europe, uh, David, who's sitting over there. He and I. There we go. He and I worked together for seven years now, based in Madrid. And it's been a tremendously successful collaboration. We've, we've been delighted with the quality of the engineering talent and the accessibility both for the East Coast US-based teams in terms of the time change, and secondly, with the, with the ability to use Spain as a, as a leverage point to get into the rest of European market. So it's, it's been an existing working relationship that's been very successful for us. And the only obvious thing is to expand it. And the, the Basque Country and the government options that are available there and the support for Cybersecurity Center in particular make it a very obvious and compelling place to expand our footprint within, within our European presence while you know, preserving, obviously, the quality of life for our staff uh, and their, their ability to, to you know, have, have a good situation on the home front and good professional opportunities as they, as they work in the industry. Um, a, a question uh, uh, to you then. Um, you were, so you are British, and once again you decided to go to Basque Country and, and do something, create something in Basque Country. Probably you could have done anywhere. Why did you choose Basque Country? Why was Basque Country so important to, to, to your success? It's a very good question. Okay, so. I think the easiest way to look at this is it's about love, okay? <laughs> In many ways. So you've got to love the Basque culture and the Basque people. And I've been told many times that when a Basque person gives you their word, it really means something. And I can, you know, I can say that's true. So you're dealing with the people that are serious, they work hard, and they get things done. Now that culture permeates everything. I love that. People generally love living in the Basque country. 
there's a very high standard of life, um, great quality of food. So we have a fantastic development team that is very happy working in the Basque country, and that's a huge asset to our, our organization. Um, so these kind of things, I think they're important. It's like what you're saying, you know? And I personally love the focus of the Basque government now on cybersecurity. There's been a natural bubble of talented people, starting with Panda and their kernel experts, and that's grown up over 20 years, and now the government is, is seeing that, harnessing it, not forcing it, but kind of coaxing it forward. So in that way, there's a multiple like, rings of love around cybersecurity, the Basque country, and that's why I chose to stay there. Wow, I want to go back. <laughs> when I hear that, I want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That's awesome. Um, Roberto, you, you told me earlier that today you have 30 people in, in, in your enterprise. But first off, congratulations. Um, great growth, great success. Um, you're not British. Uh, you're not, you know, you maybe. Why? How did Basque culture, environment, ecosystem, how did that help you get to where you are today? Yeah, in my case, it's, it's uh, easiest to decide the Basque country because I am I was born in the, the Basque country. But I will say that the ecosystem that I found when I started my career in the Basque country uh, was great in cybersecurity. We mentioned uh, Panda, that was one of the first uh, companies in cybersecurity in the Basque country. I would like to mention as well as 21 Sec when I started my career in that time as well. So I think that uh, I, I love to talk about companies I think that companies create new companies, so that's, that's the reason that we are here, actually. I think uh, most of our companies come from these uh, original companies. So the ecosystem, the industrial com uh, uh, companies related to cybersecurity, creating products, uh, it's, it's great in the, in the Basque country. And in addition, I think that education in the Basque country is great as well, and we have software developers, uh, software engineers available. So I think it's a, it's a good ecosystem. Unfortunately, in, in some years, we will have many companies in, in the cybersecurity area. So let me recap this. Uh, great weather, great food, great people, hardworking people. Man, it's, it sounds, sounds really cool. No, but I mean, you know, you, you, you mentioned um, the availability of skill set. And, there are places in the world where there are very good skill sets that are very, very cheap. And, and then the question is, well, there you go, that's the answer. Let's just have, you know, country X or, you know, geo Y do the development for us. Things are not that simple. There's a lot of trust issues. There's, um, th there's a lot of things that make, you know, that seem to make Basque country a great place for bang for your buck, essentially, for, for that. So what are you trying to achieve? What, you know, um, success is declared when you are, okay, so you're going to Basque and then you are going to achieve what? What, what, what are you going to uh, try to achieve in your adventures in Basque country? Well, I think you touched on it. There is, there's a certain value in having the continuity of the performance of the team and the fact that the team is stable and we're not forever swapping people in and out. That gives us the ability to plan and to have the, t the entire team invested in the plan. And in the security situation where we're, we're creating products for, solution, uh, for problem areas that previously were unaddressed, everyone ultimately has a stake of ownership in uh, validating that this is a problem worth solving. And that, that brings with it an extra level of commitment, an extra level of engagement from the team to make the products that much better, to anticipate that much more about how the customer might want to use the product. And I need a, a high level of professionalism to do that. And I can't get that just with a generic contract outsourced development team. I need to get it with people who are, who are proud and involved and engaged in the, in the mission. And we, we've seen that from my working experience uh, with with David and his team in Madrid, see that it's only going to improve as, uh, as our investment in, in the Basque country increases through the course of this year. So we're, we're excited. We feel that the, you know, the, it's, it's a group of equals, a group of peers who are certainly technically just as capable as any other team we might find. Um, 
but they, as, as we heard from Dan, we, we have this, this sort of intangible set of additional benefits from the team, which we believe are tremendously valuable and worth supporting. Thank you, thank you. So then on the other hand, you are based in Basque Country, you signed a first uh, contract in the US, I understand. Uh, congratulations on that. Um, what's next? What, what are you trying to do? How, what are your plans here um, in, in the US? How, how do you see your, your adventures moving forward over the next couple of years? Okay, so we see the US as a, as a huge potential. And you talk about the bridge between the Basque country and the US, so I guess we're reaching out now you know, across the Atlantic. We want to touch down in the US, set up a, a small company here. Um, initially, that will be under the Basque company. Just like to point that out there, um, and then have you know initial employees service our current clients and expand from that. So we're hoping to move from well our current revenue in the U.S. to about into improved up to about ten million dollars over the next two years. Um, that's an ambitious uh, task, but we hope we can do that and. Any help along the way from institutions like the Basque government or the U.S. government to help us touch down is really greatly received. So, you know, um, thanks to that on both sides here. And, and by the way, at the same time that these companies are explaining you how great they are, how great Basque country is, all of them are looking for clients, partners, ecosystem. You know, anything you can do, if you like the story, if you want to hear more about any of the things they're saying, I would really encourage you to have a chat and a follow-up conversation with them. Roberto, you Basque, come, you know, the US, t t tell us the story about, and, and for the record, I think the microphone is not working too well, because earlier I, I heard, I think I heard the cyber breach uh, between Basque and US, and I think it's a microphone issue. It was the cyber bridge. Okay, just for the record, <laughs> we're not talking about the cyber bridge, but the cyber bridge. Uh, Roberto, what, uh, Roberto, what, what? Yeah. Our bridging uh, to the US started very early in our company. Actually, our first two customers was in the US. Okay, we started selling in the, in the US. Uh, actually, we have, uh, currently we have an office in, in Los Angeles. We have customers in government, military, retail, banking uh, areas and our goal is to uh, obviously to grow that those customers because you know that uh, the United States is probably the biggest market in the in the world so our idea is to uh, scale to get more customers and, and, and growth in, in in the US and also in uh, over the world so that's the plan so let me give you a few closing thoughts in here um, why is the Silicon Valley called the Silicon Valley? Well, among other things, because HP came, there was some really early manufacturing plant done 50 years ago. And it was really like a seed that was planted. Fast forward 50 years, just look around, it's amazing. And I think in Basque Country, I, I think, um, and, and I'm just an observer on this, and, and I work at Gartner and I see how things evolve. I'm Basque, so maybe, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But I observed that there has been some very, very early security effort. Who knows why? But somehow there's been a lot of security, cybersecurity effort being in those, b done in Basque Country as early as 10, 15 years ago. And that has progressed. And by the same token, that it takes a long while to reach to where we are today, which is just a small step in what, you know, hopefully I'm sure people would like this to, to, to become. Um, the, the seed has been growing for a while already. And the fact that we see these companies that are so vibrant, these Basque companies coming and signing massive deals in the US, and big and promising US companies choosing Basque country to go there is really almost the POC, it's the proof of concept that there's something in there. And so as I'm observing this, I'm seeing a successful proof of concept. And I'll just leave it at this. I will thank you all the panelists here and all the organizers for the event. Thank you, everyone.